In this video, I'm going to introduce SPSS's variable view, which is down here, and talk about how you define variables within the program. Okay, so to recap, we have two variables here, gender and smoker. Gender is just male or female, and smoker is smoker or non-smoker. If you go to the variable view down here, you can see that the two variables appear here as well. Right, let's click back to the data view and create a new variable, age. Type in an age here, and let's say 33. You can see it's created a generic name for the variable here. We'll change that once we finish filling the data in. 14. These figures don't really matter. I'm just making them up. Shouldn't be smoking at 12, obviously. Okay, so let's take a look at the variable view and see what we have. You can see that we now have three variables. The first thing we should do is to change the name of our new variable to age. So just type in age there. And if we go back to data view, you can see that it's changed here. I click back to variable view and let's have a look at type. If you click here, you'll see that we have a whole set of types that we can choose from. Normally, you're going to be dealing with numeric data because SPSS is designed to perform calculations on numeric data. Age is indeed numerical, so we can stick with our numeric data here. Occasionally, you'll use dates. You might use strings, but you should aim to use numeric whenever possible. So click OK. Width, you can ignore. That just refers to the width of the field here basically how many characters you can enter decimal well our variable is age we don't really want decimal points for our age you can see we've got 33.00 that's not how we would normally represent an age so if we go back here and wait that way turn to data view you can see we now have no decimal points and that's how we'd want to represent age obviously if you're dealing with data that requires decimal points then you can alter the number here now the label field is quite important it defines the text that is attached to SPSS output so for example if you had smoking status here then you'd get smoking status attached to graphs charts and tables so let's add in a few labels more well, gender can stay as it is Let's put smoking status for smoker and age for age. You should make your labels as descriptive as is necessary to enable people to understand the output. So if you were asking people to state how many donuts they tended to eat at a weekend, you'd do well to include mention of the weekend in your label, not simply put donut eating. I'm going to skip over the values column because I want to handle that in the last part of the video and move on to the missing column. This allows you to code for non-responses. Suppose you ask somebody about their sex life and they tell you to get lost. You can record their non-answer as a code. So if you click there, hit discrete missing values, and let's have 69 as the code. If you do that across all your variables, it'll mean that every time SPSS sees 69 in your data, it'll assume it's a missing value. OK, I'm going to skip the columns and align columns because they just deal with how the data is presented in the data view and move on to the measure column, which deals with the level of measurement of your data. Now, SPSS specifies three levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, and scale or interval scale. I'm not going to get into an involved discussion of what these entail. Suffice it to say that nominal data is categorical. Males, females, pigeons, smokers would all be examples of categorical data. Ordinal data is categories of data that's placed in a rank order, so first, second, third in an exam, or even strongly agree to strongly disagree on a five-point Likert scale. And interval scale data is ordered numerical data with the intervals between discrete values are identical. So height would be an example of interval data. As far as our data is concerned, you can see that gender and smoker are both correctly identified as nominal. As for age, well, at the moment, SPSS doesn't know what kind of data that is, so we have to set it. If you click here, you see you get your three options. Now, age is an example of interval scale data. It's composed of elements of equal magnitude. The year that separates a three-year-old from a four-year-old is of exactly the same magnitude as the year that separates a five-year-old from a six-year-old. 
Right, that completes the process of setting up the age variable. And obviously, if you add more variables, then you go through the process again. If you look at our three variables, you'll notice that the first two have type string. As I mentioned earlier, that's not ideal. It'll work that way, but it's not best practice. Best practice would be to code gender and smoker as numeric data. Let's take a look at how we can achieve this using the values column. Okay, the first thing to do is to switch back to the data view. And as you can see, gender and smoker are coded just as strings. Now we can change these values so that they become numerical. Let's call female 0 and male 1. Normally, of course, you would have had these as codes to begin with. You wouldn't have them in as strings. I had them in as string because that made my introductory video less complicated. We'll do the same for smoker and non-smoker. So non-smoker will be 0 and smoker 1. OK, so we now have 1s and zeros representing the values within those two variables. What we need to do now is to switch back to the variable view and to make some changes so that SPSS is able to properly interpret the new coding. Now you can see that we have type string here for gender and smoker. That's no longer the case. We need to switch that to type numeric. Hit numeric and then ignore the error message that's going to come up. Hit that hit numeric and press OK. If you go over to the level of measurement column you can see that we still have nominal here. That's correct. We're still dealing with categorical data for both these variables. However, what we do need to do is to tell SPSS how to interpret the ones and zeros that we've just entered. And you do that using the values column. So click on there and here you have your value. So let's put zero in and if you remember, zero was female. Add. Put one in. And one was male. So male goes there. And add. Press OK. And do exactly the same for the smoker variable. So zero was non-smoker. And one is smoker. If we switch back to the data view, all being well, we'll see the labels that attach to the ones and zeros rather than the ones and zeros themselves. So let's see. Yep, and there they are. Now it's possible you'll see this, in which case you need to toggle using this button. Okay then, that's it for now. You should be able to set up variables within SPSS using the variable view. If you found the video useful, please like it and subscribe to the channel and check out easyspss.com for more SPSS tutorials.